So with us today on Stool Talk, we have with us a creator, entrepreneur, a wife, a podcaster, the daughter of Christ. Very, very, very creative. Um, and her personality, the love that she gives off and the, the love of God that's in her heart. You can tell when you see her, when you meet her, when you fellowship with her. We have with us Jordan Alexa. How you doing? Oh, hello. I'm so good. How are you? Good. Thank you for taking this time out for us. I know you're busy. You know you got stuff going on, so we really appreciate you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for inviting me. I, let me. Let me tell you something. I will support a creative <laughs> at the drop of a hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so one thing that I first ever knew about you when I first came to Embassy at the beginning of the year, yeah. what stuck out is the announcements. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Like, yeah, we got this going on. Like, you really was killing them announcements. And then another thing I was doing my, my wife, I said, she up there with her husband, too. It's like y'all had the one, too. So when y'all wasn't doing it for a while, it's like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so, you know, uh, I can tell your passion. I could tell that you were, you know, creative. And um, just the chemistry you had with your husband and how y'all was just doing it like second nature. But I was wondering, like, why he talked low? But when I talked to him in person, that's just how he talked. That's literally just how he <laughs> is. And the crazy thing is, I'm loud, but I'm introverted. And he's quiet and he's extroverted. It's just, it's so weird. Yeah. Um. So are you are you from Louisiana or just your family is? Yeah, baby. My family is from <laughs> New Orleans. Home of Louisiana, Baton Rouge, stand up. My family's from Louisiana. Okay. So so what would a good meal look like down there with them? Where would that Ooh, It depends on what you're eating. Are you eating a shrimp po' boy? Are you eating crawfish etouffee? Are you eating? It, it really just depends. Like, you really can't go wrong down there. You really yeah. can just close your eyes, pick something on the menu, and be fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> This guy and he was from Louisiana, but he was trying to like just talk big and bad like he was tough. He was at a crawfish broil. So he gonna say, You ain't from Louisiana if you can't do this. And he ate the crawfish whole. Like, Why did he do that? Well, I we must not be from Louisiana because we, I've never done that a day in my life. So he eating like this how you eating it. Two minutes later, he over in the corner throwing up and had to get sick. Uh-huh. Like, man, I knew he wasn't doing nothing uh, right. He's playing. That's what he doing. That ain't got nothing to do with us. He playing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, what does family mean to you? Oh, my gosh. Everything. Family means everything to me. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I believe that a lot of the development that we experience, a lot of the things that shape us, you know, how it is that we interact with the world starts with the family. Um, And then also at the same time, when you go out into the world and the world treats you like trash, (laughs) sometimes all you have is family, whether that be the family that you are born into um, or the family that you get to choose, Um, especially, you know, being Christians. A lot of times we meet people who are um, like minded with us and they really do become like family to us. Um, And so family is extremely important. Family is like. It's like the nucleus of the soul. Like it's like, you know, yeah. it's necessary. I I I love family. I believe in family. Family is everything to me. So, did you growing up being saved, a believer? Um, were your family saved? When did you first get introduced to God and Christ? With was it with your family or as you got older? Absolutely. So, growing up, I didn't grow up in church, right? So I, when I was little, we went to church, but by the time that I could understand what was going on and stuff like that, we weren't in church anymore. Um, so my understanding of Jesus, my understanding of Christianity strictly comes from my mom calling us into her bedroom on Sunday morning and saying, "You, you today you reading the scripture, today you singing the song, today you praying. And we used to <laughs> rotate around the room um, because, you know, our family experience some not so great things in the church. So, you know, we did end up leaving the church at a certain point in my life. And, you know, growing up, I've always had like um, spiritual experiences, especially as a small child. Um, So I did, I did veer off a little bit um, as I was growing up, but you know how Jesus is, he just set you up real quick. And I found my way back seemingly so like the way even I got saved, um, or rededicated my life to Christ. Well, first of all, I, I the Lord checks me all the time. 
I had a conversation with God in the backseat of a car when I was seven. I asked him to save me. Wow. And he brought it to my remembrance because I was, like I said, I experienced a lot of spiritual things growing up. And I just remember something had happened and I literally was crying and I asked him to save me. And the Lord always says, that's, you know, that's where it started kind of thing. But I rededicated my life to Christ, I think when I was like 19. And it wasn't like no, you know, crazy. I didn't go to nobody's altar. Nobody laid hands on me. I was at the park with some friends. We were talking about Jesus. And I literally sat there and I said, well, I mean, I guess I'll give it a try. And I have not been back since. <laughs> <laughs> I literally told Jesus, I said, all right, let, let's see what you can do. That's yeah. literally what I said to Jesus. And my life has been wrapped up in the Lord ever since. Was it any struggles? Did you get any tests when you first did that? And how was the, how did those tests? Absolutely. Um, the, I think the biggest test that I experienced was like with my friends, because I had a, a wide variety of friends. And on the flip side, you know, now being more mature in the faith, I speak to a wide variety of people. You see what I'm saying? I think that that's based on, you know, the kind of friends that I had in the past and who I was used to being around. Now I can speak to anybody, you know, about anything about Jesus. Um, but I literally had friends call me out of nowhere and be out. And I said, now I just talked to you yesterday. Now why are you cussing me out? <laughs> literally just dropping like flies. And it was, it was really hard. I went through like a really um lonely uh a season after that because I was very uh I wouldn't say social but like my group was my group and yeah. all of them left me <laughs> everybody left and the only thing I really had left was my family yeah so yeah I definitely experienced some testing you know getting saved this walk with Christ is for the week I can tell you that um I, even going and being all the way in have people say, "Well, I can't do this around him because he said he a Christian." So they want to try to put a name on what you're doing, or try to just say stuff about you know your walking, what you're doing with Christ, and you being saved. What would you say to a girl that might be struggling with that, like want to go, but she's back, wondering what her friends say, so she got one foot in, one foot out? What would you say to her? If she was in that same position. Um, number one, do what's best for you, honey. And number two, something I have learned is that people are going to talk regardless. Yeah. So are you going to let, they can talk about you while you're trying to please them, or they can talk about you while you're doing what works for you. Um, and so I, I am all about peace. I can't, I cannot do anything that is disrupting my peace. I just can't do it. And so if you're feeling, you know, this tug to go into the direction of being a Christian or even just living your life more boldly when I don't do that I do not feel settled within myself I do not feel peace at all and so for me it's just better to to live in my truth it really is so I say bump everybody that is my <laughs> advice <laughs> forget what everybody's saying <laughs> um you were in a, a play in fifth grade is that where your creative thing started or ah! that the process happened um <laughs> Second, second part to that, when you, just, when you decided to change this play, was this something that you knew that was going to be better, even though it turned out great? Like, where did you get that from? Because for you to have that as fifth grade, knowing if I put this in there and I switch and take out this, this is going to be better. Let me tell you something. I'm so impressed. The journalist in me is so impressed by the research. Let me just say that. <laughs> but... Um, at the time, of course, no, I didn't know. I didn't know what I was doing. I used to do creative things all the time when I was a kid. I used to um, make movies and make my family sit down and watch them. I used to make <laughs> PowerPoints. I used to put on plays with my feet. Like I made, made everybody sit <laughs> in the bed and like put my feet in the air and do storytelling, make different voices, all types of stuff. My husband said it was just rebellion, but now we see how it was purposeful. <laughs> <laughs> We see how it's purposeful. We see how, you know, really, and this is what I talk to people about, like when they are looking for, um, not necessarily what is my purpose, but I don't know what to do. I don't know what direction to go in. Pay attention to what you were like when you were a little kid. Pay attention to the things that you enjoyed when you were little. Pay attention to the things that you did or that you found enjoyment in. Because, you know, most of my life I heard, be quiet, Jordan, stop talking. But now talking is, 
how I make money. You see what I'm saying? And so it's just like, pay attention to those things. So of course, at that time, I didn't know. I just thought, hey, this is a good idea. This is what's going to get the people going. So I did it and it got the people going and I was just right. <laughs> <laughs> so you you have a podcast. Um, What's the name of it and how long are you doing it? What made you start doing it and what message are you trying to display and give out? Um, And what things do you want people that hear your podcast to come away with? Absolutely. So I have a solo podcast right now called Um Actually with Jordan Alexa. And it's basically a show that puts perspective in the hot seat. And all we do is we start conversation about various topics, usually dealing with, you know, the thought process or the human experience um, that typically society would have a lot of opinion on. Um, because a lot of times when interacting with people, they'll say, oh, I feel like this, but people say this. Or, oh, I, I want to do this, but what about this? And this is kind of like, but society, like, <laughs> who cares? Who cares? Yeah. Um, and so the goal of the, the podcast is really to get people to to think for themselves um, and to consider themselves. And also at the root of everything I do is to, to bring glory to God, because at the end of the day, I can't help it. Jesus is going to come out when I'm talking. It, 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 I've seen people get irritated. I've seen I've seen people, you know, change their lives because of it. It don't matter. It does not take Jesus is going to come out when I speak. So, of course, at the end of the day, the goal is also to get people to sharpen their relationship um, with God and to hone in on that. Because a lot of the people that I do speak to, of course, my audience are Christian creators, but I also have a big chunk of my audience that is very, um, you know, spiritual. Like they yeah. <laughs> there's a God or there's something out there, but there's all, there's also all these other things. Yeah. And so um, I'm always, I'm always, that's always another um, thing that I want to be, bring to the forefront. So it's really just being self-aware, thinking for yourself and finding another way to sneak in Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. I love it because to get the glory and everything. When I started off this, um, I just wanted to spotlight different people, like what they were doing, their journeys, their walk, their faith. Um yeah. The testimony because certain people be like man this ain't never happened to nobody else i'm the only one dealing with it until they hear somebody testimony like oh that happened to you so now that get them you know they get the motor turning and now they want to know more questions so they ask and now you end up discipling them talking to them about god and things like that and so as i kept on continuing to do it uh people were speaking like jv that go to the church speaking words of it Sai was saying something Chartise, like uh, I did uh with Chartise house, I go to the church. I did mm -hmm. it in the she prayed at the end, and then she like, I just pray that you're gonna be put in these different platforms and different things like that. Mm -hmm. So the next day I got in contact with my uh guy, DJ Network, who seen my interview with Big Rissa that go to the church. Wow. Yeah. Doing I wanna put your content on my platform, and then you know, we got some stuff we we're doing in the communities and different things like that. So it opened up to be able to, you know, now I could be able to minister to do the serving things and, and do the things that we are called to do and be able to minister. Um, Ooh, that's also, beautiful. Also, just to walk on our in, uh, in our purpose, on purpose. Um, can you speak on purpose and how does it look to walk in it? <laughs> to walk in purpose looks like a life of unending discovery. Um, I always tell people, don't get your purpose in an assignment confused, because I feel like people think your purpose is, I'm supposed to be digging wells in Africa, like that, you know, something so specific, but that could very well be an assignment for a season that, you know, yeah. you could be supposed to be doing that. Um, but, you know, the purpose in mm -hmm. itself is, is, is from God. And so because God is infinite, the purpose is always going to be further revealing itself to you. You understand what I'm saying? Um, so like, let's just take me for an example. I thought when I started my business, my business was simply to help creatives who were frustrated. That's it. You know, help creatives. Oh, you got an issue. Because people, people knew that they could call me for an idea and I would give them an idea. Uh, and it was for free. So I said, let me, let me start making some money off this. Um, and so I, when I started my business, you know, that's what it was, but that was an assignment for, you know, that short amount of time and God had, you know, 
had me reevaluate some things. And now we 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 are coming with the uh, uh the goal. The goal is to um, ease the intimidation of the creative process, eliminate excuses, and to empower the authentic creative voice. Woo, that sounds great. That sounds where that sounds like what I'm supposed to be doing. That sounds real like where we stay. Mm -mm. We are further, <laughs> you know, where we're going. Now I'm at a point where I am creating master classes and I'm about to launch a program for creatives um, that is geared around the creative process and their mental health throughout the creative process. Because, you know, I, every client that I have has issues with doubt or, or depression or imposter syndrome. And so, and they all think they're the only one. You see what I'm saying? And so seemingly at the beginning, I'm thinking this is my purpose, but these are just little assignments that are within my purpose. I still probably, I don't feel like, well, I do feel like I could tell you what my purpose is because somebody told me they were praying for me and they told me what it is. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, seemingly it, it, it's, I keep getting to these places and I'm like, this is it. It's like, no, it's not. Keep going. So I just feel like being in your purpose is literally a never ending walk of discovery because it's always going to, there's always going to be more. It's always going to be more. If it's something from God, there's always going to be more. It's the same way how God gives you something that's a test. It becomes a testimony. There's yeah. always going to be more, always. So walking in your purpose is literally, it can be frustrating. It can, it can feel liberating. It can feel uh, like a vast, you know, amount of things, but it's a never ending walk of discovery. Yeah. So for the youth that might be at ground zero, how can they start to be on that journey to find a purpose? Absolutely. Listen, life is about doing things. <laughs> like I know, like growing up, I used to cry every career day because they used to say, all right, Jordan, what do you want to do? Draw a picture, figure it out, you know, so we can hang it on the wall. And I used to cry every single time because I'm like, I do not know what I want to do. <laughs> and so there's like society is saying, you have to figure it out. You have to figure it out. You have to go on this path. If you want to be a doctor. You got to do this. You get it. And you go and be a doctor. And it's just like, but isn't life more than that? It's big enough. It's big enough to where you should be able to try something out. And if it works, keep going. You try this out. If that doesn't work, I'm really bad at that. So let me not do that anymore. You know, life is about trying your hand at different things and finding those things and, and, and going that way. So I would say be open to trying, you know, things. Or if, if you see something and you're, I'm really big on, visions and seeing yourself in certain places if you see something in your mind don't ignore that you know um that's like for me as a small child I always had visions of me on stages of course the people I saw on stage was like Beyonce so I thought I was supposed to be singing somewhere <laughs> I'm like I'm supposed to be singing like Beyonce so I would study her every single day and then it got to a point where I was like I do not want to do that <laughs> but now I'm I'm getting to a point where it's like uh, I I get to do public speaking at different places. I get to go to different places and, you know, speak to um, girls in college or, you know, different things like that. Uh, and so if you, if you see yourself in a certain place or if you see yourself looking at something saying, hey, that seems like, go for it. Just go for it and believe in yourself. Yeah. Please, by all means, believe in yourself. You was dropping jewels recent podcast you said your creative thinking never goes off so you have to take care of your mind how do one does that Ooh -wee. man <laughs> i tell you we could talk for days on this being a creative is 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 it's like this balance i i, I when i talk to people i was like it's, it's this beautiful burden being a creative is a beautiful burden because there's this beautiful thing that you can Take absolutely nothing and create an idea. But there's a flip side to that where if you have a problem, you can literally create a whole world of problems. Um, so being able to check in with yourself and being able to um, um, know the truth. And this yeah. is why I always, I always say it, you cannot be a creative without the creator. Because yeah. Tor means a master and Tiv means a little version of something. And so I cannot be a creative without God. And I cannot have these ideas that, that come from him, essentially. Um, yeah. And I cannot 
have this mind that he gave me and not have something to balance it off of, not have a backboard to balance it off of. Um, so knowing, knowing the Lord, knowing your word helps a lot, but also being able to identify the fact that a lot of times, number one, your emotions are not true. Hello, your emotions are not true. And then number two, when you when you hear something in your mind, you have to be able to be like, you have to look at a situation and be like, I don't, I don't, I don't see that in the situation. So that's not true either. Um, and also being able to, by the way, I talk a lot. No, this is great, great content. <laughs> also being able to understand that if God created me, he's a creator and I'm a creative and I'm a little version of him. When God created the world, he looked at what he did with his, with his hands and said, it is good. Yeah. Right. I have to be able to do that exact same thing because he get, what I do is not by my hand alone. Literally the me being able to look at something and come up with a, a creative campaign out of nowhere. No, <laughs> right. I'm not that great. I know where it comes from. And so because this comes from him, I'm looking to him as the example for my creative process. Like he created on day one, he created this on day two. He, every single day he looked at it and said, it is good. I do the exact same thing. Once I look at it, once I do something, I tweak it. I sit there, I hurry up and I declare it is good because God gave it to me. Yeah. Before my before my mind can be like, mm, that's ugly. Mm, that's stupid. Oh, before it can even come in, I'll be like, it is good. Cause I know where it came from. Yeah, yeah. So, do you like uh, do that to not assess the small things or the problems and make uh, mountains out of molehills? Like you know, like dang, this ain't right. I need to do this. So, what keeps you to work focus and it's clear? Like, what self care things you do to take care of your mind so you don't get clogged up and you can make a decisive decision and you won't go back and forth. Mm -hmm. Um. Honestly rest yeah. rest the, i i put myself in places of being able to be inspired i always say that inspiration is the food for the creative and whether that be sitting outside and looking at the trees because i'm a storyteller sometimes i have to i watch um movies um to see how other people tell stories you see what i'm saying it's yeah. it's really rest and allowing my mind to be um kind of it's kind of like it's for me it's the same as like when you're in ministry there has to be a, a time where you sit down and you're a minister too or there has to be a time where you're sitting down and you're allowing God to minister to you it's the same thing creatively everything can be output 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 there has to be a time where you're sitting down and you're resting and rejuvenating or you're taking something in you're studying something or at the same time you're uh there are times where I just not allow my mind to wander, but I allow my mind to like, I sit, it's kind of like meditating. You sit, you meditate and you allow your mind to just like make little ideas <laughs> without the stipulation of, oh, this has a deadline. Oh, this belongs to a client. Oh, this has money tied to it. You see what I'm saying? I think it's important as a creative to allow yourself to operate in the naturalness of being a creative. So I do, I do a whole bunch of stuff, but I also paint. I don't sell my paintings. I don't, you know, my paintings, I don't put my paintings on display on social media. That's something I do for me. The relaxation? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you, you said in the beginning and you said on other things that you were an introvert. Can you talk about that? What do we need to know about being an introvert? Like, what are some things that a person should know? Because I heard um, a couple mentees say that as well. So, like, what being an introvert? What things um, are like positives and negatives? What things can be done to support that? Absolutely. So whew, I'm such an introvert. It's not even funny. I always tell people that I'm an introvert with extroverted responsibilities because I've literally always been put in a place of leadership um, because whatever I do, I do it with diligence. And I, I mean, I do that thing. I put my first position of leadership when I was four and I, I was a cheerleader and they put me on the older team, older kids team and then oh. made me the captain. 
I got bullied so bad. I got bullied so mm. bad. They used to, man, but that prepared me for a lot of the things that I go through now. So as an introvert, my I have to understand that my introversion is a preference. Yeah. My introversion is a preference and my introversion is how I recharge, right? But when it comes to my responsibilities, when it comes to my interaction with people, uh, it, that that leadership thing is something I have to step into. It's something I, I have had to learn. And I feel like, you know, something I talk to about with other introverts is, yeah, you're introverted, but that doesn't give you an excuse to be mean. <laughs> yeah, you're <laughs> introverted, especially, <laughs> especially introverts who, uh, you know, seemingly for me, speaking for me myself, I've always been in a place where I am on a stage or in front of a camera or literally my entire life. And so you see me in these very performative roles and then you meet me and she like, then you you be like, she not nice. Cause she not. <laughs> Cause I see you walking through and so, must be having a bad morning. Uh-uh. And so I've had to learn that my introversion is a preference and I have to Kind of, it's kind of like stepping outside of yourself a little bit. Um, so I've just had to learn how to uh, 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 love love people, honestly, because there is a huge part of me that's just like, <laughs> like y'all. <laughs> huge by me. Yeah. A huge one. Uh, but also at the same time, I think something that, that works for me is I hate small talk. Like when I say the word hate, I hate it. Do not, the weather's beautiful me. Please don't say that to me. I don't care. We all see it. We can look up to the sky. We know the weather's beautiful. We know it's going to rain. I can't do it. <laughs> I'm I'm very much about like, because you can be sitting here talking to me about the weather. I'm looking at you like, you struggling with depression. Let's talk about that. <laughs> and so I feel like I've learned a way to um, talk to people. I don't know, because this looks manipulative. But I learned a way to 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 find out where people's um truth is or where their actual person is, like not the mask you're presenting to me. Yeah. Um, I, I've learned to find the person within the person you're presenting and speak to them. Yeah. So there's a lot of people who I like you'll a lot of people have said to me, like, I feel like straight out the bat, we were just like so close. And it's not necessarily that we were close, it's just I'm not playing with who this person is that you're presenting to me. Yeah. And so that's something that works for me. That works for me. Because if not, I don't want to talk to anybody. Yeah. <laughs> Prophetic, because you got discernment in it. And you, you said multiple things since you were little. So I can sense like it's some prophetic inside of you. Absolutely. Okay. That <laughs> <laughs> so how is being an introvert, but you creative? The thing is, my creativity also pushes me. Like, it's like I cannot, like I said, I used to make videos and make my family watch it. I can't not. Yeah. It's not something that I can't um, do. And I've tried to stifle it. I really have. Like, like I said, when I was a little kid, I used to cry. I've been an adult and I've cried because I'm like, <laughs> I want to do all this stuff. And you know, life be life in, and then you got yeah. ministry, and then you got marriage, and then you got your own stuff. And it's just kind of like, let me just focus on this. And and I can't not do anything. And so um, my creativity literally pushes me to, to just do what I'm doing. I tell people all the time, because people, it's actually what I'm talking about on my next episode on my podcast. <laughs> people always say, you're so confident. And I said, I don't know if it's that I'm confident. I just think I'm quiet and I'm crazy like there's just something in me that's just like oh yeah you can do this just do it I don't know if that's confidence but I think that's just a little bit of the, you know kookiness <laughs> um, so my creativity really just pushes me I don't even consider my introversion when it comes to my creativity yeah. I don't consider it at all you just brought me to my next question when you said something about balancing ministry marriage entrepreneurship pouring into your husband's ministry as mm -hmm. well as through yours what do you do to keep yourself and then keep yourself connected with God so you can have the capacity to do both. Pray. <laughs> <laughs> I just 
table full. I tell people all the time that I feel like, you know how back in the in the nineties they have voicemail and you can hear yeah. it like out loud and you can choose if you want to pick up the phone. I said they got a voicemail machine in heaven and all they hear is me saying, Lord, Lord, pick up the phone. Cause I pray all day <laughs> all day long. I'm like, Lord, help me. Show me what to do. Tell me what to do, Lord. Help me out. Um, because it it really is a balancing act. And sometimes some things take more of a precedent than mm-hmm. others. Um, but that doesn't mean that you get rid of one thing altogether. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, and so it really is a matter of prayer and staying, I mean, staying in contact. I mean, holding the hand of God and squeezing it. <laughs> Help me, Lord. Um, because it, it is necessary. Yeah. Um, how important do you think it is having a voice as a woman being a creative? I think it's extremely important. Um, I think, number one, I think having a voice, period. Yeah. It's, I literally, back in the day before I got saved, got the word voice in French tattooed on my body. That's how important it is to me. Because <laughs> I always used to say that a voice is literally a gift that we take for granted. I don't think people will understand how much of a gift it is to have a voice. Yeah. Um, but especially being a woman um, that has a voice and, you know, being a woman like myself. When I was little, I always envisioned myself being this quiet, just peaceful, <laughs> just graceful woman with a soft speaking voice. And I grew up to be this loud girl. <laughs> But I think it's important for girls like me to see girls like me. Yeah. Because society says, be quiet. Even growing up in my family, they said, Jordan, you better stop beatboxing because ain't no man going to marry you. You better stop singing so loud because ain't no man going to marry I mean, my husband upstairs right now. You see what I'm saying? I think it's important for girls like me to see that girls like us, we out here. And it's okay to have a voice. And it's yeah. okay to have an opinion. And it's it's okay to, to, to say it, yeah. you know? Um, so I, I feel like it's, it's extremely important. I feel like it's extremely imperative, um, especially when there's a society out there that's just saying, be quiet. Yeah. Shout out to my guy, Nick. (laughs) 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 My my bro, Nick, um, as a man finds the wife, he finds a good thing and obtains favor. Um, and one thing I noticed, like with a lot of times, people want to say, even with women being in ministry, they have something to say for them. But just like in a marriage, I know if I'm good at something, let's let's try my way. But if my wife is good at something, I don't want to be ignorant and just try to be. I'm the man. We gotta listen. No, I'm gonna listen to you because that's wisdom. And like you said, so many times people in the past they try to downgrade. Women being like women can't do this and do that, but some of the strongest women in the world make good, great decisions. You know, it came from a praying mind, like you said. Your mind used to have you in the room praying and reading scriptures and stuff like that. So it is important for women to have a voice in whatever they're doing, and we don't look at it like we listen to what they saying, understanding the God in them, understanding the ministry in them. Because if you bring in that word, I'm gonna listen to you versus me just I'm gonna listen to my bro because my bro doing. But he not doing nothing. He can't cast out no demons. He can't pray yeah. for. Also, yeah, that's man. Um, what would you say to the youth who's struggling with identity and knowing that they need to walk in their true identity? Mm, 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 mm. The first thing I say is the streets will lie to you. Don't let don't listen to the streets. They will <laughs> lie to you. They don't tell you the truth. Don't listen to the streets. Yeah. That's the first thing because. I used to be a teacher (laughs) and it's so crazy how kids are like sponges and literally what they choose to, to, to give their attention to is just what influences them. And and you just really have to be careful. Um, But I would, I would tell them as far as being, you know, solid in their identity, this is basically the same thing I said earlier. Um, cause a lot of times children sway in their identity because of what other people are saying. Yeah. Um, and it, uh, y'all, who cares? What people say? <laughs> like, right. seriously, it's hard. I know it's hard. I know that the pressures are hard. I know that peer pressure is hard. Um, but it, it, it really is 
irrelevant because when you get to the end of your life and you look back, do you want to say that you lived a life for you or do you want to say that you lived a life for other people, you know? Um, and so when, when I see children who are um, dealing with peer pressure or, you know, things of that nature, what I tend to do, honestly, um, is call out what I see in them. Because yeah. a lot of times, especially like you, you may have a child and, and you say, oh, they just bad. They, they making everybody do this and blah, 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 blah. They're doing the things they're doing because what it is that they are inspired by, but truly they are a leader. Yeah. And so what you, what, you, what you need to do is call out that leader in them, allow for them to do things that would, would, would cause them to walk in that leadership properly. Um, and that's yeah. why it's so important for people to be involved with their children um, yeah. and with children in general. I think the issue with children is, uh, you know, we like to talk about the media this and the media that. And, you know, I agree with you. I literally, my degrees are in media. I understand completely. But it starts at home, yeah, you know, sure. and you have to have your hand on these children. The reason why my life went the way that it did um, and I didn't succumb to a lot of, you know, peer pressure is because I had a mother. I had family members who were literally saying to me, you don't have to do that. You don't have to. And it wasn't in a way of finger wagging. It wasn't a lecture. You know, they were literally yeah. just talking to me and talking to me about their experiences. And one thing about me. I don't have to learn from myself. I can learn from you. That's <laughs> that's right. just fine. Um, right. But we have to be more active with our children. So I think it's not only about what to tell the child, but what it is that you are doing and how it is, you know, you are interacting with the children as well. And like you said, community is everything. Maybe even yeah. having or different things like that. Um, what would you say to a young girl that might be fatherless, but she has great gifts, talents, and um, what would you say to her for her to not be struggling with the loss of a father or absence for she won't go find that in a guy or other thing? Mm-hmm. Honestly, a girl in a situation like that, I don't feel like there is one thing that you can say. Um, but if I did have to say one thing, I, the main thing I would say is you are enough. Because a lot of times with girls like that, you, you put yourself in situations because you do not realize your worth. And you are, you're looking for something to tell you that you are worthy. Mm -hmm. um, and even somebody, you know, you said a young girl who has gifts and all these things. Um, Unfortunately, a girl who is father a fatherless, a lot of times our, our first line of uh um, um confidence and you know believing in yourself does come from your father, it does come from a father saying, Wow, look at you, wow, look at you know, it comes from that. And if it's not there, it's really it's really hard to believe in yourself, honestly. Um, so I think the main thing that I would tell a girl like that is you are enough and you are worth it um and then also at the same time i would talk to her about jesus because <laughs> what your earthly father did not do yeah your heavenly father would do exceedingly more oh yeah. my gosh i promise you i promise you yeah because that's what god is god is love and our father wants to be able to give that love to be able to show him yep absolutely yes yeah. So where can people find your business at? Where can they find your podcast at? Where can they follow you at? Because you're, you're a business creative counselor, storytelling. And what does it offer? Absolutely. So um, I own a business. It's called Inscribe Out, um, which is a play on the word inside out, you know, getting the story out of you. Um, and it is a story. What'd you say? Find out you got bars. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it's a storytelling and creative consulting business and what that means storytelling exists on a grand scale of media so I help people in the areas of creative writing branding and social media and creative sets and projects um, so that is people who write books people who write scripts people like who write plays um, I help in the development process I help with editing um, brand identity brand voice um, you know um, creative campaigns. I've helped with music videos. I've helped with commercials. I've helped with all types of things. And the whole general scope is how is it that you are communicating to your audience? So, um, and how can you do that authentically? 
um, because right now we live in the age of what I like to call mass production creativity. You see a trend, you do a trend. Oh, I hate it. Yeah. It's disgusting to me. Um, and what people are finding out is just because you do it doesn't mean that it's going to speak to somebody. So another thing I also I always tell people is somebody's going to buy a story before they buy a product. So how do we get your story to communicate with your audience properly to be able to interact with you and do what it is that you need them to do? Yeah. So you can, if you, you know, want to hit up, hit me up for that, you can head over to inscribeout.com. Um, to book your discovery call and we could see how we can work together you know based on now or if you just want to follow me uh, for whatever reason you can find me on Instagram at underscore Jordan Alexa that's at underscore J-O-R-D-A-N-A-L-E-X-A -A -A. and um, or just Jordan Alexa on Facebook <laughs> more the announcements <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> thank Absolutely. you and you know sitting down with us great gems um great conversation and um i believe whoever needs to get what they need to get out of here god is going to be able to allow them to hear this and allow this to get through the airways to be able to touch them and uh you just continue to do what you're doing and god gonna bless you and bless what you got going on in your business he's gonna send you all the right people to be able to connect with you and he's gonna put you in front of them because you got a ministry inside you like i said you very yeah. proud it and you're intentional like it ain't no like you said it ain't no games with you so if you are around people are oh, they gonna get to know and they're gonna get what they need out of you absolutely amen thank you so much and thank you so much for inviting me yeah yeah hold on hold on real quick mm -hmm. uh -oh.